Hey gang, Jane here with another crochet tutorial. This is the first of a three-part video series where I'll be working you through the steps to create a small throw out of one of my more popular squares, the daisy square. I frequently get asked about how I join my squares and assemble my blankets and throws. So although I'm using the daisy square as my square of choice for this series, you can apply these techniques to most any granny square. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you an alternative version of my daisy square that I used for this throw. Since I already have a tutorial on how to make the daisy square, which I'll link to below in the description, I'll be starting this tutorial partway through the square. This version changes up only the last three rounds of the square to create a different kind of border and one which I like to use to create my throws. So I'll be starting with a daisy square that already has the first five rounds completed, as these rounds are the same as the original pattern. So again, to find the first five rounds, you can check out the original tutorial, and I'll also have a new blog post for this series, and there you'll find the free pattern for this new version of the daisy square, with the final three rounds being different. I'll also show you how I work my ends in as I go on these rounds. It's difficult to hide the ends when you're working a lacy edging with all the spaces, but I'll show you the trick to hiding them in your work as you crochet. And we'll also discuss how many squares we'll need to make for this throw. In the second video in this series, I'll cover how I join my squares, and in the third video, we'll finish up our throw with a beautiful border to frame our squares. I'll be working this piece in three colors, a nice soft green as my main color, a white, an off-white, and a light beige as my contrast colors. And as I mentioned, I'll be starting this tutorial with a square that is already worked up to round five. So I'll also be using a five millimeter crochet hook. It gives me about a seven inch by seven inch finished square. You could go up to a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, which would give you a little bit of a looser square. And this works well if you tend to be a tight crocheter. So gather your supplies and your favorite colors, create your daisy square up to round five, and let's dive in to today's tutorial. My original daisy square, once I squared off around the original blossom part in the middle, I did three rounds of single crochet. So you can see that here. This was how the original daisy square pattern was first made. Once I did the square, then I did three rounds of single crochet, solid single crochet all the way around, even in the corners. Now this daisy square that I've been working on, and I'm this is a lot more the way I do my squares now, is I do this chain two single crochet border because it gives a lot more of an airy look. So if I put them beside each other, you can see the difference in the look and there is a difference in the feel. This is a more solid square and this is a more airy square. So this one is great for things such as trivets and placemats. This one's better for throws and afghans because there's more airiness to it. It's a more flexible square because of all the space that's in it. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I take my original daisy square. And after I've done the squaring off, as you can see here, I'm going to show you how I do these last three rounds. And you can work these, these rounds on any of my squares. It is what I do more often now than just the regular single crochets because I like to use them for throws. This gives me a nice airy feel. And I will also show you going forward in this series how I use this kind of a border to make joining my squares a lot easier and seamless. So let's take a close up look here at what I've done. Once I did the squaring off of the circle with this green, I'm using a beige and I'm doing a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. If I were to do a chain one in between each, it would pull it in a little. And to do that, you could do that, but you'd want to go up um, at least one size, if not two sizes of hooks in order so that it doesn't pucker in. But I like to stick a chain two in there and it gives it some nice breathing space. And then I can block my square at the end to get a nice squared look. So let's grab one of our center pieces and I'll show you how I work these rounds. So again, I'm starting this tutorial after the first five rounds of the original daisy square pattern and we'll start with round six for our alternative border. So to begin round six, take our beige yarn and we're going to join in one of our corners. Any corner is fine. So just go into that chain three space that creates the corner and pull up a loop of your beige. Now we're going to go ahead and chain one 
And then we're going to work a single crochet into that same chain three space. So now you want to chain two and we're going to skip over a stitch. So chain two and we're going to skip over that first stitch. It's actually a treble. So we're skipping over this treble stitch and working into the next one. So go ahead and work your single crochet in there. And that's what we're going to do all the way across. So you're going to chain two and then you're going to work, skip over the next stitch and work into the next one. So let me work my way slowly across the top so that you can see how this shows up. Chain two, skip over the next stitch, single crochet in the next stitch. Now when I squared off in the daisy, there are no chain spaces. So everything is a stitch all the way across. So chain two, skip over your next stitch and single crochet in your next one. Chain two, skipping over the next stitch and single crochet in the next one. Chain two, skip over the next stitch and single crochet in the next one. We're almost there. Chain two, skip over your next stitch and single crochet in your next one. And one more time, chain two, skip over this last stitch and single crochet into your chain three space. Now that we're at the corner, you can see here how it kind of creates this nice little pico look all the way across. Now that we're in the corner, we're going to work a corner. So our corner is just going to be a chain two as well. So chain two and single crochet in that same chain three space. And now you've created your corner and you're going to work across the next edge exactly the same way as you just did. So I'll get you started. We're going to chain two and you're going to skip that first stitch and single crochet in the next one. Chain two, skip the next stitch and single crochet in the next one. Now you can see it forming all the way around. So go ahead and finish that round. When you hit the corner, remember the corners have single crochet, chain two, single crochet, all into this space right here. So go ahead around, work on every edge, and I'll meet you back here when you get back to this place that we joined, and I'll show you how we finish off the round. Now I've worked my way all the way around my square, and I've come back to the end where I joined. So I want to work the other half of this corner. So I've done my last chain two here, skip over this stitch and work into this chain three space as a single crochet. Now you want to chain two and we've already worked a single crochet to start with. So that's where we want to join the end of this round. So you're going to go under that stitch, that first single crochet, pull up a loop and pull it through the loop on the hook. That completes the round. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn. So now you can see you've completed the first round. So that's the beige. What I did is three rounds. You can do as many or as few of these as you like, as far as the rounds go, because they can increase or decrease the size of your square quite easily. This initial green square right here is your base. And then how many rounds you add on will add on the extra measurements that you might want for a larger square, or maybe you just want to do one for a smaller square. So our next round, we're going to use white. This one will seem a little easier because now we're going to be working into the chain two spaces instead of actual stitches. So you'll know exactly where to work. 
So it's the same round as what we did before, but we're now working into different spaces. So let me show you how to do this. We're going to join in any one of these corner chain two spaces. So insert your hook, pull up a loop of your white yarn. We're going to chain one and then work a single crochet in that same chain two space. Now we want to go ahead and chain two. Now, instead of stitches, we're going to be working into the chain two spaces. So go to the next chain two space and work a single crochet. And then we want to chain two. Then go to the next chain two space and work a single crochet. So you can see it's the same stitches. We're just working into the chain two spaces instead of working into stitches. So chain two and single crochet in the next chain two, and we will work our way across this edge. So chain two and single crochet in the next chain two space. And then chain two, single crochet in the next chain two space. And you can do as many or as few of these rounds as you like to increase the size of your square or to have a smaller square. You just would work one or two of them. So we're almost to the corner here. Chain two, single crochet in the next chain two space, chain two, and we've reached the next corner. So in the corner, we're going to work single crochet, chain two, single crochet to turn our work to work down the next side. So single crochet, chain two, and single crochet in that same chain two space. And that's your corner. You can see it there. That turns your work. And now you can work down the next side. So you're going to do this all the way around your square. And I'll meet you back here to finish off the round. So here we are back at the beginning of the round here, and we want to finish this off. So we want to work a single crochet into that same chain two space that we started with. And then we want to chain two to complete our corner. And then we want to slip stitch in this first single crochet. So I'm just going to go through and pull that through. I already have my yarn cut. And we're going to finish off the round like that. So the next round we want to do would be in green. And what I want to show you here on the next round, because it's identical to this round, you can do as many or as few as you want. As I said before, the green round will be my last round. But what I want to show you on this round is how I work my ends in. So here's where we finished this round. And I always darn this end in before I start the next one. So what I want to do is take this last end and put it on my darning needle. Now I'm going to work this end in across this edge, working only in the back loops of these stitches. So take the yarn and you want to go just through the back loop and I take it to the back of the work. That's where I like to start from. And then I'm going to go underneath coming from the back to the front back loop only. And then I'm going to do the same to the next one. So I just kind of spin my needle and go down and into the next stitch. So you can see here how the only the back loops are on my darning needle. And then I can pull that through and it's going to go all the way across. So let's put this back on my needle. It's not a very long end this one. And we're going to go under the back loop only from the back to the front. And I'm going to do that all the way across, just looping a whole bunch of them on there all in a row. So I'll just go along here and then I'll show you what it looks like. See how they're all on my darning needle, only the back loops. And then I pull that through and then readjust it. And then I just have a little nubby here. So Normally I have a longer end. I think I used this piece before, so normally I can get all the way to this corner. So make sure you leave your end long enough. Um, 
I normally don't cut it until I finish the round itself. That's why that one's shorter. At any rate, it should really work its way all over here because on the next round, we're going to work over top of it and that helps also secure it in. So that's how I finish off the end of a round. Now we're going to get the green and we're going to do our last round, but I'm going to show you how I work that end in it as well. So now that you know how to work the round, let's do working in the ends. So pick a corner and I'm going to pick a different one. Any corner will do. So go into the chain two of the corner using green this time and leave a long enough end, pull up a loop. So we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet in that same chain two space. And when I put my hook in, it goes underneath this cut end so that I am working it into the stitch. Pull up a loop from your working yarn. Keep the two distinctly different. Working yarn goes over your finger. The cut end is lying next to the work. And we're going to complete our single crochet. So here is where you might say, well, how do I work those ends in without them showing at the back or in all of these loops? This is how I do it. I take the working yarn and keep it on my hand. The cut end is here. We're going to take the cut end and cross over top of the working yarn. So it's over top of the working yarn right here. And then you're going to chain one. So it is now worked into that chain. Now we're going to take that cut end and bring it back across the working yarn. So you're twisting it back and forth, back and forth. Then we're going to chain our second chain. It's now worked into that second chain. So it's following us along as we work. Now we want to do a single crochet in that first chain two space. So I take the cut end and I hold it with the edge right above the stitch I'm going to work into. I insert my hook and make sure it goes in the chain two space and under the cut end, holding them together and the working yarn. I'm going to pull up a loop and finish my single crochet. And now that's worked into that stitch as well. And I'm going to do that all the way across until I run out of yarn. So see how you cannot see it. It's the same color as this. So that helps, but it's not hanging in the middle of that nice open Pico. So you don't lose the effect there and it doesn't get snagged. So again, we're going to do it again. Take the cut yarn and throw it over top of your working yarn into the back chain one. Now bring it back over top of the working yarn again to the front chain two. And now hold it right with your work going into the next chain two space. Insert your hook, making sure it goes under that cut yarn as well and complete your single crochet. So let's do another one and I'm just going to flow with this one. Yarn to the back, chain one, yarn to the front, chain two, and then hold it with my work and work a single crochet. So your yarn is actually getting worked up into the chain stitches and then back down into the single crochet all the way along. So the yarn is actually doing the same looping effect that your single crochets are. So let's keep working our way across and you can just watch me doing this until we want run out of that cut end because it will get shorter and shorter. So we make sure we loop it back and forth across our working yarn and then we work under it for the single crochet stitch. So whenever you're working your yarn in with chain stitches, that's what you do. You work it back and forth across the working yarn so it gets woven into that chain. I often do that when I'm working beginning chains as well. Like if I have a beginning chain four, I work it all the way back and forth up the chain four and that really secures it nicely. So we're almost out of our working end. I don't even know if we'll get another single crochet out of it. See how short it is there? We won't. I could try, but I'm not going to bother. 
Um, so I'll go ahead in and just do a regular single crochet without worrying about it. And then when I come back after and I've kind of, I don't cut it right away because the work might have some time to kind of work its way in and I just let it do that. So chain two, work into this last chain two space before we hit the corner. And let's go ahead and chain two and do that corner. Single crochet, chain two, single crochet in the same stitch to create the corner. So now I have the green going across the top and I've worked my end in right here is where the last part of it shows up. And when I'm done my square and I've done all the little, I sometimes I even wait till I've blocked it, which is probably the best thing to do. Once it's been blocked out and steamed, that's when I'll cut these little guys off because then they're steamed in place, which is even more secure. So people often ask, how do you work those ends in with all these little pico edges? That's how I do it. So you can go ahead and finish the green all the way around and then you'll do your chain two slip stitch in this last one and you'll complete your final daisy square. Now you know how to take the original daisy square and change it up into this version. And you can do that with any square. You can change the solid borders into single crochet chain two borders the exact same way. So the other option is, is you can do a single crochet round all the way around to give it that nice solid edged border and then do this border as the last two rows or even just as the last round. So if I was to keep this and do the beige and the white as solid single crochets, I would do the green in this stitch because this is the stitch that I need to join the squares for this particular series. And it's the stitch that I use in all my squares these days. So that's how you do this version of the Daisy Square. And again, this is one video in a series towards making the throw that I did using this square. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how I join my squares using the stitch that resembles this chain two single crochet stitch so that it's a nice seamless look. So for the Daisy Throw that I'm working on in this series, I need 35 of these squares. And because I like to mix it up a little, I did two different versions here. So you can see that I did one in the off-white-white -white combination, and then I flipped it and did the reverse. So I believe I did 18 of this version and 17 of this version for the total of 35 squares. You can do every one different, or you can do every one the same. So once you have your 35 squares, we're going to start joining them. So in the next video of this series, I will show you how I join my squares together to start making the daisy throw. So go ahead and make your own squares. As I said, I'll be making 35 total and this will give me a throw of about approximately 40 inches by 55 inches because my finished squares are about seven inches by seven inches. And this is a nice size for a living room throw or a baby blanket. You can make more squares if you'd like a bigger size blanket. This technique will work just as well. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel so you're sure to catch all my tutorials as they come out. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you back here to join our squares.